Well, hello everybody. Welcome? Or I guess not because, you know, lockdown, so... Hello everybody, not welcome. So a lot has happened since my last video. But that's okay. Oh, you'll have time to do everything you want to, they said. Oh, you'll have time to develop this new skill you've always dreamed of. They said, oh, yeah, you will have all of this energy. Where are you going to put it? Maybe work out? Maybe get some summer body? <laughs> they said, I've taken the time in the evenings to draw a little bit whenever I feel like it because, you know, Corona is not necessarily something that gives you energy forever. Uh, for today, I actually don't have much plans. So I asked Mikey because I'm going insane and the only people I talk to is my cat. And this is his answer. So Maki, what should I record next? Well, an artwork of me, of course. But I kind of drew that before the lockdown, so... I will hear none of it! You shall show the world my likeness and might, and soon they will worship me in my fashion sense. You do have style. I know, you absolute fool. You should show the world the proper ways I wish to be revered, which is in the form of art. I actually thought about that too. Good, good. Go on and share the knowledge of how to praise the almighty cat, lord of fashion and style. Mm, right. I'm sure a new human like you will be able to summarize a how-to draw and create a piece dedicated to the feline superiority. No, no, you're right. You're absolutely right. Then go, show them the way. I need to take my nap now. You may leave. Oh, of course, sir. I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, anyways, let's get to it. I'm gonna share with you some ideas, some secrets. Get your mind off of the Rona and start doing the things you want to do yourself because you have all the time in the world, so they say. I'm gonna start with sharing with you what I actually do. There's two ways to go at it. You either draw from your mind from scratch or you draw from a picture or something you're looking at. Depends on what you want to draw. You can use regular paper, you can use your notebook, I guess, to draw whatever you want. Draw on paper if you want. Or you can use what I use, watercolor paper. You have two types. You have the ones that are hot pressed. It doesn't absorb as much. So it's really good for drawing things on it directly that have like lines, like really thin, like like, mm. or you can have the cold press paper, which is actually porous. It's just like a bit more. This type of paper is used for when you want to use a lot of water. A background that is all like super absorbent. This is the cold press. Now, if you need a little bit more precision and a little bit more help, you can also get yourself some transparent paper. So what I did was put this transparent paper on top of the screen or of the printed picture, whatever you want. Then I drew it with my pen, my trusty pen. Then on the other side, I kind of like did like this with a pencil and then you trace it back. And what you get, you will get like on the paper that you traced it on, it will be like kind of like a shadow, smoky graphite uh, lines and then you can get yourself from that. So that's how I start my paintings now. Let's go back to Mr. Mackie. Alright, so once I had all the lines traced, I decided to go for glasses and also like a shawl. I don't know. I, I've kind of pictured Mackie as this type of really fashionable cat who's judging you. It's, isn't that what cats do? Like judge you harshly? forever. Anyways, so what I did was try to mimic the same colors. First, you want to start with the lightest. 
the very light colors. Just look at your picture, what are the lightest colors? The whites, leave them white, don't paint those because well, the paper is white. So you go for grays, you know, the yellows, light blues, etc. And then you start filling in the darker ones. If you want something that is a bit less, mm, how shall I say, separate, that is more like, oh, the color changes from one to another. What is this mayhem? What is this crazy? Oh my God. Then you should um, try to add more color when it's still wet. Really look at your picture and really look at the colors. Just uh, try, to, try to match it. So what you don't want to do, don't do the same mistakes I do here. For the love of God, don't do them wait until it's completely dry. Ah, look at the bleed, look at the bleed! Ah, stop it, stop it! What you can do, in case you make something stupid like I just did, is simply dab it. Just dab on them haters. Wait for it to dry, because obviously if you put water on water, then the water will mix, and then you'll have some bleeding, and that's not what we want. In the meantime, just be patient, do your thing. You made a mistake, uh, just dab on them, dab on it. Don't worry, don't worry. It'll be noticeable, sure. But who cares? It's your art, art is subjective. Once you have all the background done, which is all the colors, all of that nice and, and diluted stuff, then you can go for the foreground. Uh, of course, you can also do the opposite. If you have really nice ink that dries, that is not, you know, that doesn't dilute with water, you can start with the ink and then add the water colors. But for this specific thing, I first wanted the background and then I wanted to add all of the, the details. Yeah, so here I'm just looking at the picture back and forth and just making sure that the lines I draw are not, you know, incorrect. They're not wrong. They're not a mess. Because guess what? You cannot go back on ink. Haha! <laughs> so the ink part is really important. Once you go black, you never go back. That is a saying and it's because of the ink. So make sure that your lines are very, very carefully drawn on, very thought out, and you will be fine. And if not, again, it's art. You can just say, eh, whatever, it's okay. You made a mistake, who are you? Huh? Cast the first stone. Back off, man. So for Mikey, I actually used the picture of him um, to, to have it more realistic looking. And then I used my imagination to add some things. Watercolors don't have a lot of colors because they're diluted with water. I don't know if you knew that, but... Um, so of course, this will also go through the digital machine. All right, so first what you want to do is select the outside of whatever you're working with if you want to uh, replace the background and delete. Boom. So I took a picture of a paper, I cropped it, I took the blue part and I put it as a background. So what I do next is simply replace the background, but I didn't like the blue, so I played around with it until I came with this orange and, and I used that as my, as my guide of colors. Now, remember, digital art is like Shrek. It's full of layers. So again, what I said, layers, 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 layers. If you work with layers, that means that you can change them without affecting the rest. I added some shading, maybe needed some more white over here, maybe needed more gray over here. And I used a brush that was similar to a watercolor type of brush. You always want to have your reference picture, if you're using one, nearby so that you can see what went wrong, you can see what the details are that you're missing. In this case, I missed all of the really thin white lines. And in my experience, adding white lines on regular paper is kind of difficult, especially on watercolors. So what I do is add them digitally. And guess what? Whenever I made a mistake, Control Z. You can do so many things to fix your mistakes. Nobody's perfect. Just go ahead and fix them, you know? Once I was done adding all these white little details of all colors, of all like, just to give it some more, you know, to make it more furry, I went ahead and started to work with the colors. Now, when you want to select a part only, you can use the little magic wand. You can also use the loop-to-loop, -loop, or you can use that weird pen. Anyways, the point is you have to select the parts that you want to change specifically and be very precise about this. Ah, pro tip, sometimes it's easier to select inverse. Instead of selecting the thing that's in the middle with a 
like one background. Mm -hmm. With your right click, you go on select inverse and it will select the opposite of whatever you selected, which is sometimes a lot easier. Another pro tip for Photoshop is that you can click on the little weird eyes, select what you want to see and what you want to hide. In this case, I hid the background, which is the original picture. You always want the original picture as a background, just so like in case you make some terrible mistakes, you can always go back to the original. You play around a little bit with it until you find your match. Another pro tip, especially for people working with Instagram, is to either want the square picture or the dimensions of four by five, because that's the crop that Instagram uses. Then at the end, I just added the Maki, because that's his name. I added my signature and I upload it. Voila, you have yourself a stupid picture of a cat. I hope it was useful and that it gave you some ideas on what to do during these times. If you do have that time and you actually draw something cool, please tag me, comment, send it to me, uh, message me. I really want to see what you guys make and if these videos are helpful at all. So comment below what you would like to see next. And if you like this and you want to see more, please give it a like and subscribe. Anyways, that was it, you guys. See you next time. Hello, my name is Pauline. I've been editing these videos for the past, I don't know how long. And this is a message for you. Please, if you see these videos, contact your local police and send them out here to save me, please. I've been in here for longer than I can remember. So please, please help me, help me.